Hello from Raquel and Ricky. We've been retired and living in Mexico for the past two years. And in this video we want to share some of the things that have helped us with learning the Spanish language. And also some of the things that have frustrated us learning the Spanish language. Yeah, the same thing that keeps happening over and over. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. So we tried to learn some Spanish before we left Canada when we were still living there. But I don't think we put in as much effort as we could have. Um, we were selling our home, uh, as they say in Ireland, up the high We landed down in Mexico with basically a handful of words, I would say. Yes. Like literally, maybe five words. Maybe more than that, but... Ten. <laughs> So when we came down to Porto, we lived in Colonia, we still live in Colonia, but I think it might have been our first week here and we went to a lovely restaurant, we love it, called Mariachi. And the particular night that we were there, there was not an English speaker in the restaurant. Uh, the menu, we were unable to read. I think we looked like two deer in headlights. Like, And I'll, I'll never forget this family that was sitting beside us and a young girl leaned over and said, uh, my family told me I have to help you in English. And we're like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she totally ordered our dinner for us and uh, it was a really great experience. But I think at that point, we just knew, whoa, we gotta knuckle down here and learn some Spanish. And today we're in beautiful Anita Cafe. There's a lovely breeze and we have these, oh, I love the espressos here. But thank you so much to Cindy for supporting our channel and buying us these espressos. Salud, we appreciate you. Gracias. Gracias. So the first thing we used down in Mexico was Duolingo, which is a free app that you can download and use to learn the Spanish language. Mm -hmm. And for us, it was really beneficial, especially at the beginning, because Ricky and I are really competitive. So it was like, <laughs> it's sort of like a game except you're learning so and and we stuck with it for a long while unfortunately we haven't been using it as much lately but it, it, it was useful definitely yes mm -hmm. so one of the other things that we did to learn Spanish was there was uh, two local Mexican girls who came to our house every week twice a week and uh, we swapped Spanish for English English for Spanish and their English um, was less than our Spanish. So it, I don't know how it worked out. And it was actually really fun. And we'd have different topics for lessons. Like it might be food or telling the time, things like that. And we did four hours a week. And um, I don't know how much Spanish we learned, but we certainly had fun. We drank a lot of Coke and had some biscuits and some good laughs. But um, yeah, we tried that. And then we've been reading books in Spanish, uh, books called Side by Sides, where one side of the page is English and one's Spanish. They're helpful. And then YouTube channels, uh, Butterfly Spanish, we absolutely love. And Spanish with K. Ro Paul has been really helpful too. So it's, uh, we're just drawing from any source we can, really, what's working for us. It's an ongoing process. <laughs> oh yeah. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please, do that. Well, that's a thumbs up. It is. <laughs> you know what I mean. Press that button. Thank if you. you. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. So basically, we've been proactive in learning Spanish. Uh, it's really important to us. And the most difficult part is to go out into the community and actually try and speak the language to the locals. Mm -hmm. It's It can be embarrassing because you know you're making mistakes. It's not going to be perfect Spanish. We're just learning. It's a process, it's a journey. And I think one of the most frustrating things has been uh, people whose first language is English constantly correcting and criticizing us. It's um, happened over and over again. And I just, I, it's, it's sort of a socially shaming. What did you say? Say that again, oh. And it's like, oh, really? <laughs> Because the Mexican people are so kind, so helpful with their terrible Spanish, so nice. Well, it's particularly frustrating when people are pronouncing words and 
the Mexican people, if we're talking to them, they understand us perfectly well what we're saying. They don't try and correct us. They don't say, oh, you're saying that wrong or make a big thing about it. Mm -hmm. But English speaking people who have a little bit of Spanish seem to want to do this for some reason. Yeah, and it uh, embarrasses us and I don't know, it's cringy. And then we find ourselves avoiding um, English first language people. It's like, I think we speak more Spanish to Mexican people because we feel safer with them. Well, They're helpful. They, you know, obviously we make mistakes and, and they'll help us, but it's a, a different manner altogether. And we're not talking about everybody, obviously, no, but there, no. are, there are a few people. A who, few Karens. A few Karens. Be like a Mexican, not a Karen. <laughs> <laughs> so, not that long ago, we went to the Yucatan, and we've been to some villages in the Yucatan where there's not a lot of tourists, there's not a lot of people that speak English. In fact, a lot of them know English whatsoever. But we were able to get by, we were able to talk to people, they understood what we wanted, they understood what we were saying, and there was absolutely no problems. Yeah, and I, I believe that the Mexican people really try to understand our Spanish, that they're, if, well, when we mispronounce things, that they're, they're listening and figure out the gist of what we're saying, and... Um, Again, just, I know I say it over and over, so kind and helpful, and we felt totally comfortable in these uh, villages with no other English speakers, and we, like Ricky said, able to, to get along the best, so. And nobody's laughing at us, nobody's trying to make fools of us. Yeah, uh, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, this... Karen syndrome, I'm going to call it. <laughs> I just find it totally weird and don't really understand it. But I know it's not just us experiencing this because we have had friends here that we've talked to about it. And we also have friends in other areas of Mexico uh, who are also in the process of learning Spanish and have had the exact same frustrating experiences with um, English speakers. We don't know why people feel that necessary to correct you or to say oh you're, you're saying that wrong or but it's, it's just seems to be a thing unfortunately yeah not with Mexicans though not with so remember act like a Mexican not a Karen and if you've watched to the end of our video thank you so much we appreciate you and we have a new video coming out next Friday please subscribe drop us a comment we love to hear from you have a totally awesome week. See you soon. Gracias. Bye.